The mealybug destroyer is a ladybird beetle. It is used as a biocontrol agent in commercial agriculture and horticulture to treat mealybug species. However, it can feed on at least eight hemipteran families. As of 2012, it has been introduced to at least 64 territories. It is considered native to the Australasian Zoo Geographic Zone. The egg stage lasts about five to six days. Each larval instar lasts about five to eight days. Pupation lasts about 10 days, and the adult stage lasts about 80 days. This was under laboratory conditions of 26 to 30 degrees Celsius and 60 to 70 percent relative humidity on a diet of Phenacoxus solenopsis, which is the cotton mealy bug. The mealy bug destroyer is able to feed and reproduce on 23 species of Pseudococcidae, 18 species of Coccidae, 1 Areococcidae species, 6 Allerodidae species, and 3 Aphididae species. Despite this wide-ranging prey selection, it isn't necessarily effective as a biocontrol agent against every species on which it can develop. It is commonly used to control Macronelicoxus hirsutus, Phenacoxus solenopsis, and Planococcus citri. In desperate cases, it may be possible to establish a population of this biocontrol agent against aphid species such as Mises persicae, Aphis gossipii, and Aphis nerii. But development time of the larvae may extend to 10 days longer than on mealybugs. Larvae will resort to cannibalism when food is scarce, so it is imperative to expose them to prey as soon as possible to discourage this behavior. Larvae bought as a biocontrol agent should be visually inspected and then released into a crop, making sure the larvae are deployed as close to the mealybug population as possible to increase effectiveness. These larvae are rather delicate, so care should be observed during handling. Adults and fourth instar larvae seem to discriminate between mealybugs parasitized by Leptomastix dactylopii and non-parasitized mealybugs. There seems to be a strong preference for consuming those that are not parasitized, supporting their use in tandem with Leptomastix dactylopii. Additionally, make sure to visually evaluate the locations where mealybug destroyer was dispersed. Larvae and adults should be feeding on adult female mealybugs, and they can be found on the tops, but more often the bottoms of leaves. Cryptolamus montroseri is considered easy to rear, and may be the subject of insect husbandry as a way to combat pest populations. Techniques are available on the internet and may be a novel way to maintain a population for them for use in mealybug control, especially if they are a constant occurrence and other treatment options are just simply not available or acceptable. As general treatment advice, this species is adapted to tropical environments. An optimal temperature is 30 degrees Celsius with a relative humidity of 70%. Environments with similar qualities are ideal for application. Populations will not feed nor lay eggs below 21 degrees Celsius, making it imperative that such conditions are not encountered. Treatment control may be severely impaired if they are. Heavy populations of mealybug ensure quicker establishment of the mealybug destroyer. Therefore, one should focus on dense populations of mealybug first. They can be signaled by the presence of sooty mold, which grows on the honeydew exudate of mealybugs. Sooty mold has a black appearance and a fuzzy characteristic to itself that usually grows in the patches above or below mealybug populations. 
denser populations will have a greater amount of sticky honeydew exudate and possibly a much greater amount of sooty mold. As a beetle, it is sensitive to many insecticides, especially chemistries like those of neonicotinoids and avermectins. Additionally, the mycoinsecticidal agent Bouveria bassiana is a species of entomopathogenic fungus that is able to infect Cryptolamus montroseri as well. Products containing this agent should be used cautiously around locations where the beetle has been introduced. Applications that would result in direct contact is not advised. Cryptolamus is likely compatible with many mealybug parasitoids, but there may be some intergild interference with some species of parasitoids and other predators. Like a proper primer, this video is meant to be short and to the point, although that does cut out a lot of information about this species. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll also provide other links and ways for you to communicate with me on issues. I'm always happy to help.